Two quick things, I'm a bit embarrassed about the second thing, but first, whose style do you prefer? Jamie Raskin, straight to the point, no BS, always with a little bit of humour, or the soft-spoken FOS, Katie Britt. If you're like me, going for Raskin, press the like button now for Raskin. Uh, the other thing, just very quickly, uh, a bit embarrassed to say, but uh, if you get a second, press the thanks button and buy my team a coffee. $1.99, that's it. Thank you. Decline. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director, for being here. I wanted to ask about, uh, continue to ask about the border um, and your involvement at, at the border in assisting with identification of individuals. You'd agree that uh, it's a national security risk to allow individuals into the country um, who are not properly identified, correct? That does raise national security concerns, yes. Okay. Uh, the FBI has been engaged in, in DNA testing for several years of individuals crossing the border. In fact, um, DHS recently, or within the past few years, mandated that that identification occur, correct? Uh, yes, yes. And uh, when DHS rolled out that program, uh, authorities found that about 19% of family units crossing were fraudulent. Uh, does that sound about right? That part I don't, I don't have any reason to dispute it, but I, as I sit here right now, I can't remember that specific piece. Okay. Yeah. But failure to properly identify individuals coming across the border uh, engaged in human trafficking, sex trafficking, child sex trafficking, are, are attempting to evade uh, identification, correct? Right. I mean, the whole identification piece of this is, I think you're rightly putting your finger on, is such an important part of it. And that's why, for example, uh, we have, as of trying to be good partners with DHS, we have been providing them with DNA kits that then uh, our lab uh, is the one who would then test. And it has proven to be critical in identifying murderers, rapists, and all sorts of you know, dangerous individuals. But you have a shortfall, right? You have a backlog. And we have a backlog. And that backlog, because of the sheer volume at the border, with the, with the volume of people coming across, the volume of the need for samples has gone skyrocketing as well. So there's a backlog, and the backlog should be of concern to, to all of us. Do you think it would uh, be appropriate or would address this national security risk, as you say, uh, if we were to ensure if we were to ensure that these individuals uh, would not be released until their identification is complete? Well, uh, certainly I think that's something we should be taking a look at. I mean, that gets into sort of DHS's authority, so I'm a little reluctant to, you know, given the sheer number of things that are on our, our plate uh, before I start weighing in on what should be on somebody else's plate, but I, I will tell you that um, we have any number of instances where somebody who is of concern, where there wasn't adequate uh, biometrics or other identification information at the time they came across, then later information is found that highlights why they're of concern. Uh, and then it's the FBI and our partners who have to then go try to find the person, take whatever action we can to disrupt the threat that that person poses. So, okay, rather than ask if it yeah. should be mandated, let me ask it this way. Would it improve security at our border to ensure that only those who have been properly identified are released into the country? Uh, at least as I sit here right now, I don't see how that couldn't help. Okay. Thank you. I want to also ask about, um, you, you touched on it in your testimony, FISA Section 702. Um, You've said that a warrant requirement would gut, I think was your term, uh, at compliance with the Fourth Amendment would gut a tool that you have. Is that essentially? Uh, well, uh, I did use the word gut, and I stand by it. I would say a couple things. First, when you say compliance with the Fourth Amendment, let's be clear. No court, as in none, 
has ever held that a warrant is required under the Fourth Amendment for the FBI to run queries of information that's already lawfully under in our holdings under Section 702. And the only courts to have addressed the issue but isn't have that gone the other way. So that's one. But isn't that information uh, the intent of the law uh, designed to provide the information of foreign nationals, not American citizens, uh, who are and, and wouldn't that really be a an and run around the statute, as you say, to lawfully obtain uh, this information? No, no. I appreciate the question. Um, I think the purpose of Section 702 is to identify foreign threats to us, to Americans. Uh, and so when you have, I'll give you an example to illustrate the point, it is critical for our ability to identify foreign terrorist organizations communicating with, inspiring, or working with people here in the U.S., and that's how we identify and stop attacks. We had an example just last year where we had an individual foreign terrorist overseas who had had some kind of contact, not sure what it was at that point, with some person we believed to be in the United States. So we did a query. We ran a U.S. person query on that U.S. individual's identifiers. But at the time we ran that query, we didn't know what we had. Could it, was it the equivalent of a wrong number? Was it just innocuous chit-chat? Or was it something that was concerning? Well, because we were able to run the query, again, information already lawfully in our holdings, that's when arguably. we discovered, that's when we discovered, whoa, wait a minute, we got a live one here. This is serious. This is urgent. Investigation kicked in very quickly, and within less than a month, within less than a month from that first query, we were able to uh, arrest the person who had, by that time, weapons, bomb-making equipment, targets circled, and everything else. And the point I would try to make here is that if we had had to get a warrant in a day to run that initial query, no, no, sir, it doesn't work that way. If somebody's had to get warrants, if we had had to get a warrant. For that initial query, there is no judge on the planet that would have given us a warrant based on what we knew at the time. All we knew at the time was foreign terrorist overseas, some kind of contact with some person in the U.S., no idea what it's about. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I've gone way over. Mr. Stefanik. Director Ray, have you read Robert Hur's special counsel report? I have reviewed it. Do you believe Joe Biden mishandled classified information? I'm, I'm not going to discuss the report. That's the special counsel's report, and I've referred to In your him. opinion as director of the FBI, do you believe he mishandled classified information? Again, I'm just going to refer to the report, and the special counsel can speak for himself on his report. Are you aware, and this is breaking news right now, are you aware that there's an audio recording of Joe Biden saying to his ghostwriter in February of 2016, quote, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote? Are you aware of that audio recording? I, again, I would just respectfully refer you to the special counsel. No, I'm asking itself. you, are you aware as director of the FBI? You're either aware or you're not. I'm aware. Am I aware of what now? Whether the audio exists of Joe Biden saying in February 2017, quote, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote, to his ghostwriter. Again, I'm, I'm just going to refer to the special counsel and his testimony and his report. It sounds like you might be aware of it then. In front of this very committee in an open session, your predecessor, Jim Comey, testified that he did not follow the proper protocol regarding the notifi notification of Congress of the opening of the crossfire hurricane that would be the counterintelligence investigation into President Trump in 2016. To address this illegal abuse of power by the FBI, this committee included direction to the FBI in the IAA requiring notification to congressional leadership of any counter intel investigation into a federal candidate for office. Is there any counterintelligence investigation into either Joe Biden or Donald Trump? I would just say I'll refer you to the special counsel has... That's not a question about the special counsel. Right. That's a requirement in the IAA of the FBI. Is there a counterintelligence investigation into either Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Uh, there's no investigation that I could confirm here, no. Is there, a, is there a counterintelligence investigation? Again, I'm not confirming any investigation into either candidate. Are you aware that you're required by the IAA to notify Congress of any counterintelligence and will, investigation? And we, will, and we will comply with the law. Have you already complied with the law? Has there been a notification? I believe we have been in compliance with the law. You believe we ha you have been, or has there been a notification to Congress I, I of any I counterintelligence believe, investigation I, of a federal candidate? I believe we have complied with the law. Has there been a counter intel assessment conducted on either President Biden or President Trump? 
Again, uh, there's no assessment that I would confirm here in any way. I believe we have been in compliance with the law. How about on an immediate family member, and by that I mean spouses or children, of either President Biden or President Trump? Again, I'm not in the business of confirming, especially not in open hearings, assessments or anything like that uh, when it comes to counterintelligence matters. So you will confirm in the classified setting when we ask you this question of whether there's a counterintelligence investigation because you are aware that according to the IAA, you are required by law to notify Congress of any counterintelligence investigation, not just for presidential candidates, but any federal candidate. We, we will comply with the law. So you will answer this in the classified hearing later today? We will comply with the law. And what's your understanding of the law? Uh, there's a whole series of oversight requirements that we have related to counterintelligence matters. I'm not going to try to go but through all of But specifically the here. notification of Congress of a counterintel investigation onto a federal candidate. How do you, what is your understanding of the law? Again, I would want to refer to the lawyers to make sure that I'm appropriately complying with it. But I can I tell you we're going to comply with the law. And my understanding is we have been. Is your assessment that you're required to notify Congress of any counter-intel investigation into any federal candidate? I would, again, I'm going to defer to the lawyers as to the precision of that. You're the director of the FBI. They report to you. What is your understanding of the requirement in the IAA? We're going to comply with the law, including whatever's in the IAA. I want to turn to the search warrants and the search. In one case of Mar-a-Lago, an unprecedented raid and a search working with Joe Biden's legal team. Were you or your staff, did you have any communication about either the execution of the search warrant on Mar-a-Lago or the search of documents working with Joe Biden's lawyer? Was there any communication with Joe Biden of you or your team? Not to my knowledge. With any White House staff? By, by me or my team? By you or any personnel at the FBI. Again, I want to make sure I've got your question right. By me or my staff, with who about which? With the White House staff about the execution of a search warrant on Mar-a-Lago or the search working with Joe Biden's lawyers of classified information? Not to my knowledge. What about the Attorney General? I, I can't. Speak for the Attorney General. No, did, was there any communication with your staff, with the Attorney General, or you, regarding the execution of the search warrant or the uh, search of Joe Biden's classified documents? Well, any search would be, uh, would be done in coordination with the Department of Justice um, as to who may have communicated with whom. I'm asking if the you. the FBI and the Department, I, that I, I can't. I'm asking if you to. communicated. Whether I communicated with the Attorney General, prior or after the execution of the search warrant on Mar-a-Lago? No. Do you think it is a national... Oh, oh, prior or after? Prior or after. Well, I would have had conversations with the Attorney General about the um, appointment of, at that time, Mr. Lausch. And what were those conversations? Just about the fact that the, he was going to be named. But that's not really about the search itself, I suppose. And my last question is, do you think it is a national security threat to have a federal campaign account on TikTok? Well, I've been very clear about my views about TikTok and the national security concerns it presents.